When you do your retreats, please don't treat it like another social occasion. And I say all this as knowledge sake, not criticism. Please don't fidget around. Stretch constantly. Can I have feel like that? Move. Do all this. Constantly drink water. During retreat, you're not allowed to drink, actually. I allow you to. You're not allowed to drink constantly. It's called discipline. Constantly with your water bottle, drinking, 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 non-stop, drinking, drinking. Then you have to pee, then the drink. The whole session becomes drink and pee. When I did my retreats, I did six to eight hours without drinking or pee. In one session. Straight. Real, higher practices, you don't talk. If you cough, <clears throat> spit, <clears throat> sneeze, achoo, fart, let out, gas. You must do the mantra seven times extra to cover. Because during that time, the mantra doesn't count. If you talk, if you talk, the whole session is wasted. So if you do 20,000 mantra, it's considered nothing. You have to start all over because you, you profaned it with talking. You're not allowed to drink. You can't constantly drink when you're doing retreats. Constantly just drink and drink and then just hold the bottle and drink and put your bottle down. Doing retreat, there's not one time you should even put your model, model, model down. The whole point is to discipline yourself. And I recommend you to do your left hand. If you cannot write, okay, I recommend you left bare Vajini. Vajini must be done with left secretly. If you see yourself a lot of anger, do it on the first finger. If you see yourself able, not able to control things in your life, especially your mind, do it with your second finger. If you see yourself as very miserly and greedy, do it with your third finger. If you see yourself full of rage, do it with your last finger. Because there's chi points here that will help you to transform those things in life. But not one time during your retreat, and I would like the pastors to remember this, during your retreat, during that session, you should put your model down. Put your model down, put your water bottle, your drinks, things like that, you take your phone, you look at it. No. You know why? Not that putting your mala down is bad, looking at your phone and drinking water is bad. It's focus. Focus. Those are the things you're used to doing. Discipline your mind. Discipline and focus. If your legs and your butt is killing you, it's falling asleep, get up, stand up quietly. Stand like it. Don't disturb the other retreatants because you respect them so much. And stand up and stretch and walk around. You know, you can. It's allowed. But don't be in a corner with a glass of water and, you know, like I've seen some people, they just kind of kick back like Charlie Chaplin. And if you're really in tremendous pain, and most of you should be because you're not Tibetan monks, you can stretch your legs out. Sit on a chair in the back row. When you sit on a chair in the back row, it doesn't give you more freedom to do more naughty things. It's just your physiological not able to. But if you train yourself to sit, half the session, sit half the session on chair, half to sit, you'll get used to sitting, I promise. It took me about a year. Then later I could sit six to eight hours straight. Oh, I paid the price for it, trust me. I have my legs to numb. Anyways, um, what is it? It's not to torture you. If you really, but you're too fat, if you're older, if mostly like you haven't sit like that, you cannot, or you have a bone problem, all that, of course sit on a chair, of course. But if you sit on a chair, also don't fidget. Drop your mala, look around, look at your phone, send messages, drink water, drink tea, move constantly. If you drink more, you gotta go pee more. You're only doing a two hour session. How many times do you have to get up and pee? Hold it, la. Close the door, close the bridge, hold it, discipline, la. Oh, you go, you go pee and one drop of milk. Then you come back, drink, drink water, and you're wasting time. It's not bad if you drink water, go pee, no la. It's just another form of discipline. Control your body, don't let it control you. Now, if you have pee problems, of course go to the bathroom because due to your discipline, we don't want to be flooded. <laughs> Wow, Joy's so disciplined, that that's why I can see her golden liquid coming to me. Serkim. <laughs> of course, go Pila, but look, if you know you're going to do a retreat, could you drink less before you enter your session? I did that last time. Don't look at your phone. 
If there's a Rimji die, someone go up there and tell you Rimji's dead loud, then you can get up and do what you need to do. Until then, don't worry. Even Rimji dead, don't stop your retreat. Then the mom's guru died. She didn't stop her retreat. In fact, she did it even stronger to dedicate to him because he doesn't need her help. So if you're having leg problems, sit on a chair, no problem. Sit on a chair, but remember, on the chair, the discipline is the same, except for sitting on the floor. Don't keep peeing constantly. Don't keep looking at your phone. Don't keep putting a model down. You know, some people really, they, 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 they put their model down, they take the water bottle, they drink, they go, and they're all casual, they look in, they fold their shirt, they put it here, put there. And what is that? Housekeeping time? Discipline. Sit straight. Make sure your back is straight. Focus. Force your mind to focus. Force it. Do you know why you need to force it? The very reason you have to force it tells you why you have to force it, because you have no control. Force your mind to do what you want, not what it wants. Never listen to what your mind tells you. Never. Sit there and do the mantra with breathing exercise. Focus on the mantra, just focus on, focus on what, just the sound, nothing else. Keep blocking out everything else. Block everything else out for two hours. Block. You get tired, rest a little. Rest without going, oh, I'm gonna rest. <laughs> rest without looking like you're resting because you gotta respect the beautiful Dharma brothers and sisters who might be disturbed. They're, they're on the same path as you and they can be distracted too. So if you keep going to the bathroom, keep drinking, keep looking at your watch, looking here, going back and forth, you distract them, that's not very kind. Or oh, I won't go for a retreat. Ah, yo, don't be so defensive, la. So, just in that kind of tone, very low. If you're not with anyone, it can be a little louder. Just enough you can hear. One mala, one mantra, focus. You know, if you're supposed to do 100,000, you can gain attainments at 50. So don't be focused, fixated on the number. Be fixated on your focus. Like Vinny, when I ask her questions, she can't remember because she doesn't focus. This kind of meditation will help Vinny and many people like Vinny. Vinny's not bad, she's just not used to focusing. So, you should hear your sound. Sit straight, that's your cheek. And if you have leg problems, sit on chair, do no problem. Focus on the sound, and then, oh, I have to cook, oh, I have to buy this, oh, I want to go on my WhatsApp, oh, oh, what's going on, oh, what's going on, oh, what's going on, oh, what's going on, oh, block it out, when it comes, block, when it comes, block. You know, most of you during your retreat, the whole session is not dedicated to game attainment, it's just blocking your thoughts. You spend your whole time blocking your thoughts, and that itself is very good. You know why? Because you're not used to even doing that. The procedure of blocking helps you to discipline your mind. So during your retreat, please block out all thoughts. You mean I'm supposed to stay like deaf, dumb, and stupid? Yeah. You know what? You know what you get from blocking out your thoughts? Your memory increases, your focus and attention increases, and your concentration and your comprehension increases. I give an example. Now tell them where you were born, how many kids you had, your, your family had, and all that. Start talking about your history, quick. Okay, now, stop that long, stop that long, stop that now talk. I was born into May 1964 after that. Is there a difference? <laughs> <laughs> well, Vinny's mind is like that. Just like my mind and everybody else's. Which one was easier to listen to Martin's um, explanation? <laughs> and that's what's happening in our mind. You guys understand? That's what's happening in your mind. So during your retreat, that's what you're blocking out. And when you block all that, you know what happens? When you gain that discipline, it will lead to blocking out cigarettes. It will lead to blocking out attachments. It will lead to blocking out intoxicants. And food, it will lead to that because you're creating that cause to gain discipline. 
you guys understand it. Please remember all this so you can share with other retreatants in the future, so you can pass the knowledge. Today is not scolding you, telling you what you did wrong. Today is telling you you're doing a great job. Let me give you more knowledge because this is the next step. I never explained any of this to Beatrice. She doesn't know any of this. Nothing. I never explained any of this to Joshua or Lou. Lee Kings have not heard much of this. Vinny's not heard any of this. Nothing. So for her to even answer a little, it's amazing. Sweet Kings never heard any of this. Do you see Sweet Kings with a lot of attachments? No, right? Hence, when I ask him a question, he can answer so clearly because he's focused. Because he has no family, no relationship, no smoking, no drinking, none of that. So when I talk, he can just focus and concentrate. He goes right in because there's less la la in his mind. And he's not even meditating. He's the one that answered the best and clear and very firm. Because the best la la's. The ones with the more la la's are the ones who can't answer at all. I just proved to you my theory. Does it make, does that, is that kind of go over oh here? Yeah. Is that an aha moment? So while you do your retreat, block all the lalas out. And you're going to be doing that for the next one or two years. Oh my God, really? You're lucky. You know why? Because if you never do it, it will never happen. So you'd be stuck with you and Lala for the rest of your life. So when you're dying, Lala, Lala, la, la. <laughs> oh, yes. It's not just so clear and concise. The example is very easy to remember. So why is Sweet Kim able to concentrate? There you go. Less things filling his mind. Less fear. He doesn't have much fear. Because he has nothing much to protect. He doesn't care about ego. If you scream at him, just whatever he looks at, he walks away. You scream at joy, oh my God. <laughs> Get the armor out, can't be time. There's so much to protect. So Sweet Kiln will learn Dharma very fast, even if he's here for a short time. Someone who's always godly defensive, they won't learn. I'm not talking about godly, I'm talking about godly defensive. will never learn much. Even 10 years go by, they don't know much. They can't teach much because what they spend more time defending their attachments. Does that make sense? That was very clear, wasn't it? So while you're doing your mantra, whether it's Manjushri, my dear friends, I'm here to serve you. I'm here to teach you and I'm giving you knowledge so that you will be successful in your practice. That's why I called you here. I want you to win. I want you to win. I don't give public teachings anymore, as you know. This is as public as I get. So when you're doing Akha Samarasa Shandarasa or Ming Mente Meditation Chinese, or you're doing Umara Pasana, or whatever retreats you're doing, keep blocking out all thoughts. Don't even meditate on a deity. Just block out the thoughts, block out thoughts. That's what they do in Thich Nhat Thanh's beautiful center. That's what they do in the Theravada tradition. They do breath meditation, walking and sitting. They, don't, they have no deities, no visuals. They block out all thoughts and focus on the breath. So what are you doing? You're focusing on your mantra. What's the difference of focusing on the mantra and breath? Nothing. Because the point is what? To develop the focus. And when you can focus on your mantras and block out all thoughts, I promise you, premonitory abilities will arise. You'll start getting very strong premonitions. Because why? When you block out the noise, listen carefully. When you block out your noise, glimpses of the subconscious will come. And the subconscious mind doesn't need your senses to perceive phenomena. I repeat, when you block out the noise, your mind calms down. When your mind calms down, that's the gross mind. Your subtle mind is able to start arising. The subtle mind does not need the five senses to perceive anything. That's when you start gaining clairvoyance. So without looking at what Vinny's doing, when I visualize, I'll see what she's doing. So when I look at David, I'll know what he was in his previous life. And that ability will increase. They gain that from Vispasana meditation, Shamatha meditation. They gain that from new mattress. 
then you'll see your premonition ability and clairvoyant ability start to rise. Before, way before that, your sharpness will arise. Your senses will be very sharp. Even if you're old, your senses will be very sharp. And, and your comprehension level will excel. Why? When you have less noise, you can concentrate more. When you concentrate more, you can absorb more. Simple. And by reciting the mantra itself, you're connecting with the Buddha, you're collecting merit. The merit itself will push this meditation to be successful. So, Akasamaraza. So, doing your Akasamaraza sessions or any re retreats you good people do in the future, block out all thoughts as a practice during the retreat. No phone, no nothing. If there's an emergency, people let you know. Block everything out and keep training. Don't listen to me. Don't block out that you're not aware of your surroundings. Be aware, but block out. How do you be aware and block out? It's like being in a noisy room, but you can still listen to the person in front of you and focus on what they're saying and you can comprehend. A person who doesn't train, they can be in a noisy room, they go, what, huh? Oh, it's like they look here, they, they get very distracted. Aren't there people in a busy, noisy room that can talk to you and they can focus what you're saying? Aren't there people in a noisy, busy room with a lot of people, they can't focus on what you're saying, they're always looking left and right? Those are the people who never practice meditation. So when you're doing the mantra, Akka Samana Sashandana Samana Yamke, breathe calmly, sit straight, Sit with your back straight as possible because your back straight will help move the chi energy stronger. Whether you're sitting this way or lotus or this way. Make sure your back is straight is very important. When you get tired, relax a little. And then sit up. And do not let your mala down during the session. If you have to sneeze, you can pick it up again. Do not keep fidgeting with the things around you. Keep straightening things out, playing with your clothes, taking off, playing on, taking off, taking off. Block all that out. You know why you're blocking that out? Taking your clothes on and off like you're your cold hot. It's not bad. It's just you keep getting distracted and you distract people around you. Focus, just sit still with yourself. When you do that, when you go higher in your meditations, a lot of things that you've done in the past you can't remember will come to you. Your memory will become very, very sharp. Do you know why? When the noise stops, you can remember. You can focus. Memory is there, it's never gone. You can remember if you focus. If you focus, if there's no noise. So you get intellectual intelligence, focus, concentration, good memory, very, and your intelligence go higher. Does that make sense? Did I give you a logical understanding of why that can happen? But it's connected to integrity. It's connected to keeping your promises. Connecting to not being lazy. Most important is don't let other people do what you're supposed to do. Most important. It's compassionate. So there are your retreats. If you have to drink, quickly put down quality. Don't keep thinking drink, 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 drink. Then pee less. When you drink and pee less during retreat, nothing happens. People who drink more water, people who drink less water, there's no difference. If they're going to sink, they can just sink. They're old, they're old, they're wrinkled, they're wrinkled. I see old, old, I see some old bats who don't drink anything much. They're still old bats. I see people drink a lot. They look at me, I hardly drink anything. They're smooth as a baby. Who says I'm 50, man? I see, I, I know some of my students who drink constantly and still look like old bats. Me, no difference whether they drink a lot or not. It's in the mind, uh, Seriously, I don't sleep. Do you see any eye bags? I haven't slept in 36 hours. It's going on 48. It's not, I, I'm always too busy. I'm not telling you to do that. Do you see any eye bags? No, you're not seeing eye bags. Because I take charge of my body. I'm not a team, but I take charge. I tell my body, no, I don't do it. Shut up. Simple. So, what happens is, we retreat. If you can sit in a semi lotus, sit in a semi lotus. If you have to sit on chair, sit on chair. If you sit on chair, sit in the back. And don't move around, don't fidget, don't keep fixing, touching things. Don't make as little noise as possible. Sit still, like a Zen monastery. And recite the mantra while you're reciting the mantra, what do you do? I can't hear you. Keep block, what noise? Where did the distraction come from? 
from your set. And all the thoughts that keep coming blocked out. So you stay in, a, stay in a state of thoughtlessness. You might think, but I might become blurred. You won't. You become sharper. Because you know what you're doing? You're not actually blocking out thoughts because thoughts cannot be blocked. What you're doing is controlling the ability to focus and concentrate. Then you will gain memory of your previous lives. You will have visions of different Buddhas. If you don't have visions, you have dreams and then you'll see them with your subtle mind. And when you block out your mind and you go into your subtle mind, then clairvoyance will arise. Premonitions will arise. Because those are dependent on the subtle mind. When you dream, you need to use your eyes to see. Do ghosts have bodies? Do gods have bodies? Does God shouldn't have a body? Yeah, he can enter and tell us blah, 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 blah. So that is the mind. If ghosts exist, your next life exists. Your mind can exist without your body. Your mind can perceive, understand, hear, taste, touch. Your mind can taste, touch, see, and hear without your body and without your senses through meditation. So when you're doing the mantra, don't fidget around. Stop playing with your phone. Stop being distracted. Sit straight. Keep your back straight as possible. And focus on the sound of the mantra and keep up. And I promise you for two hours, you're going to go back one or two hundred times and catch yourself, cut, go back. Then after a while, you're drinking on your thing about this. Oh, shoot. I've been thinking about that again for ten minutes. And catch yourself, go back. And in the beginning, that's all you do. You're just catching yourself. But we have to start somewhere. Everybody understand that? Any questions? That's very important. Wear clean, loose clothing. Don't come in with tight pants and a push-up. I told Linda, no push-ups. Linda says, I'm doing push-ups, I hate the gym. Can you drink during the retreat? Officially? Oh, no. Since you guys are all unofficial, do you keep drinking nonstop and keep running to the bathroom nonstop? You spend more time drinking, running to the bathroom, do you retreat? If like that, do you retreat in the bathroom on the toilet? Ah. Excuse me, I'm doing the toilets. I mean, and put a pipe in your mouth. Put a pipe in your mouth. Oh no, you have to decide that. Put a pipe in your ear and then put this pipe down there and you just go pee, go pee, up a samaraza, go pee, up a samaraza. What do you keep running to the bathroom for like a clown? And if you get a little thirsty, get up. No, no, have something ready. Don't get up, get a glass of water. Cover. What is this? Lounge time? Karaoke? It's not bad. Focus. These are all the things that distract you during meditation. So I'm just saying to have less distractions. So if you have a headache, get up and take medicine. You have to. If you have a convulsion, oh no, no, block that up, block that up, you die. <laughs> Of course, get medical help last. Slap that meditator next to you. Break up from somebody, help me. Okay? Wear clean clothes. The five black foods. What are the five black foods during the lower tantra retreats or meditations and practices we must follow? Actually, we're doing signal every day. We should avoid the five black foods anyways. To be more effective. What are the five, five black foods we need to avoid? Mm -hmm. uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Cynthia, name one. Louder. Got like, it. I'm going to take your money. Louder. <laughs> okay, it. Lance. Honey. <laughs> Bawa. Thanks. Chicken. Fish. I can't hear you. Me. Oh. Anything left? Yeah, so if you can avoid, if you can avoid all meat, it's even better. Chan music practice is very important, like a beautiful Kuan Yin tradition of the middle of the pure land, no meat. If you have to go to the bathroom, you have to make sure you rinse your mouth and rinse your hands before you come back, and do not talk. Rinse your mouth, rinse your hands. So what are two ways to develop very powerful concentration, focus, intelligence, and memory? What are two ways? Name me one way. Joshua? No. Okay. 
is doing the retreat block thoughts. What is it? Block the block of thoughts. Yes, very good. And keep blocking it. Block doesn't mean you're blurred. Block means you don't keep lose yourself in the thought. What's the second way? What is the second way? Joy? You hear it. You hear yourself and you hear the mantra very well, emanating from her body. And, it, and when it's so loud, should we do it again, David? <laughs> when it's so loud, can you even hear yourself think? Can you focus on, can you talk? You can't talk. Exactly. And that's, why do you want to do that? So that you stop all these thoughts constantly. And those thoughts are the ones that feed your attachment, feed your lies, feed your forgetfulness, feed your all the negative things that we do. Because we can't focus, we can't stop. Because we can't focus, we cannot stop. Everyone should do their rituals. Some people are using the bell mantra, some people are not. Some people that other people do it. The umze should be switched every session. You can have one main umze and a seat next to the umze. So that umze stays for the whole three days, six days, ten years, one year, whatever you're doing it for. Then you have a secondary umze. That is a train up, the discipline. Everyone should do your mantra and bell. Everyone should pick it up and use it correctly. Put it down. Try to use a smaller bell. Don't use it. I'm sitting next to the big bed. Use your mantra and bell because you need it later for higher tetra rituals. It has a lot of meaning, which I won't go into today. Make sure your tables place well. Make sure your bells place well. Make sure your malas place well. Make sure that your books and everything is placed well. Make sure your cushion is ready. If you need to elevate, don't elevate yourself during retreat. Get it all ready beforehand. Go a little early and sit and see how you're comfortable now. Not during the middle of the retreat. You're fixing this, you're fixing this, you're fixing this, you're water, you do that, you're going to pee, uh-huh, you do everything. Except focus on your mantra. So even you do 100 retreats, nothing happens because you didn't make anything happen. You're still you. You're still distracted. The key is distraction. Distraction leads to further enhancing your attachments. Everybody should have a mandala. Everybody should learn how to do a mandala. I've given teachings on YouTube. Everybody should have a mandala for retreat. If you have a long mandala, what are you doing? You're offering it your 10 fingers. I was so good about that. It was up your nose, up your armpit, up your butt, everywhere. They want to it with them. Here, have my crappy fingers. Everybody should have a mandala. Everybody should have a nice mandala set. And if you can't have a nice, nice mandala set, visualize it to be nice. Learn how to do it. There's a way to do it. First this, first this. How to purify. That that own visit with me ah, own watches this ah, own visit with me ah, own watches this ah, she own visit with me ah, own chi cha di boy di boy, sha lu ba bo po zhe bo li lu ba dong zhe zhang zhang bing dian lu dan lu ba ai ya dong ai ya xian yun dian dong la zhong 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 etc etc. As you recite, there are specific places where you put the rice. Everybody should have a mandala. What are you offering your ten little pretty, dirty, ugly, dirty fingernails? I offer you the whole world. See, no one's like, really? <laughs> you cut your nails first? Yeah, what's your mandala? You spend so much on dinner every day. You spend so much time on dinner, 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 lunch, lunch, dinner, dinner, lunch, lunch. You can't buy a mandala, is it? Everybody should have a nice mandala and use it all the time for retreats. And learn how to recite and do it. Memorize it. How to memorize all that? You memorize everything else you wanted to do in your life, didn't you? You memorize how to do bubbly. Memorize it. Do the mandala. Do it correctly. You cannot do it for this retreat. Make sure you have mandala for the next one. And you don't practice during the retreat. You practice before. And don't make noise and don't joke and play. Make everything so fun, fun. It's not fun. Your attachments are not fun. Your lack of attention and lack of focus is not fun. Your being stuck in mandala in, in samsara is not fun. You are not fun. Learn how to do the mandala, it's like it's here. And all these papers should not be dog here. Should not just thrown here and there. Should not be folded and just really put here, there, got fold. If you want to fold it, make it into a booklet. This is Dharma, this brings you to enlightenment. 
This is more important than all the Kama Sutra magazines you've seen in your whole life. This should be put well, it should be put respectfully, it should put it in a folder, put nicely so you can use it again. Never mind, I'll print it, throw it out. Yeah, the paper is nothing, the ink is nothing, but the content is something. Before you use it, touch it to your forehead and then look at it respectfully, make sure your hands are clean. After you're done, touch it to your forehead. When you show that amount of respect to the Dharma, the Dharma knowledge will grow. Take care of your sadhanas. Take care of them very well. Never put them on the floor. Never just throw it here and there. Never just stuff it in your back and it's broken here and there. Just fold it simply like that. Take care of it. And if it does get ruined somehow, respectfully, dissolve it into that ah, uh, dissolves into you and burn it respectfully and get a new one. Sometimes it does get destroyed some summer. You know, what kind of help? Temples burn down, so what's a piece of paper? Of course. But the whole thing's respect on it. Okay, so. Today I wanted to tell you about attachments. I want to tell you how it's related to our mind and always being busy and not able to focus. And then how that feeds attachments. But I want to tell you how we can cut those off by doing the meditation on the mantra. Or just by cutting out thoughts. Then I wanted to teach you also how to understand what is the fury of a Buddha and what's the effect of the fury. And how to use that for our benefit. Then I wanted to teach you some rudimentary rules and regulation rules and regulations for our retreat. All the rules I give you for retreat during the war, all that stuff, it's actually not meant to torture you. It's actually meant to help you discipline your mind. Because this this cannot, this cannot, everything cannot. Even a few hours thirsty cannot. Everything cannot. Even hold your pee cannot. Everything cannot. After cannot, from small cannot become bigger, cannot, cannot be then you become a diva. You walk into a move over single mom. You become a diva. The whole point of holding your pee, holding your drink, holding your water, discipline, sitting, sitting straight, stop moving, stop yawning, stop scratching, stop playing, stop making all kinds of funny mudras. It's not so much those mudras you're doing or the drinking all that's bad. It's that even something small like that you cannot control. Even a little pain in your legs you cannot harm. Wow, you're so delicate. Everything cannot. That's all. See, nobody said developing discipline is painless. A spiritual gym is not painless at all. Gyms are painful. Go run one hour on the treadmill. Go do weights. You see how painful it is, man. Does everybody understand? Make sure your retreat space is clean. The mind should be clean. The retreat space should be clean. Be generous with the offerings, meaning always cheapskate, make everybody else pay, and then you offer up. Actually, when you offer up, you're not offering anything because you're a cheapskate. Be fair. Be fair. Make sure the space is clean. Offer sun to sing Noma every day and then recite it well. Do the rituals correctly, learn. Do the mandala for the next time, learn. Don't learn during retreat, don't learn one, two days before, learn now. Learn before the next retreat. Whether you're alone with people, do it correctly, do the mandala offering correctly, how you lay it down, how you recite correctly, and the visualization. The teacher should teach without pride, and the learner should learn without ego. What is learn without ego? Ah, once I know this, I'm gonna look good. <laughs> That's with ego. The teacher should teach without pride. See how much I know? No, you don't know anything. You don't know. If you teach with pride, you don't know anything. You're just a parent. Sit straight, sit comfortable on a chair or cushion. If you need to stretch your legs, stretch. If you've got some pain, endure it. If you're a little dipsy, endure it. Don't drink constantly, pee constantly. It's just two hours. Even that cannot discipline, is it? I promise you, you drink more water, you drink less water. If karma says it's over, you're going to look like old bat, you're not going to be healthy, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference whether you drink more or less, it's just what the doctors say. I do everything what the doctor said not to do. Look at me, I'm smooth and beautiful. So you can drink all you want, it doesn't make a difference at all. The drinking is not the point, it's that I have this, I have to have this, I have to have this, always. Now, if you have a medical condition, it's different. It's very different. That's your body, that's not your mind. It's the karma activating your body, you can't control that. So 
So if you have diabetes, you need to have a little snack. Even in between retreat, you need to have a little snack because you have diabetes. That's not you not having discipline. It's your negative karma manifesting in a form of sickness, which can be even a bigger obstacle if you don't take care of it and you can't do any dharma. So by doing a little misdemeanor, it helps you to do more dharma. You understand? It makes a lot of sense. Do your vajra and bell. Hold your malas well. And doing retreat, your mala should not be left down. And don't don't be reciting mantra. I, sometimes it feels like that, recite like that, you put it under their home, a cross over Why is it under your feet? Why, why is your mala under your feet, under your butt, under your thighs? What? You got holy thighs up. Your thighs is single as a same dong ma. Why is it why is your mala under your feet? Why is it under your leg? Why 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 sit in meditation like this? What is that? Make sure your shoe is far away, or single must present. Sit in semi, or half, or however you're comfortable. If you need to move quietly, with the deepest respect to the other meditators, use your left hand to train. Sinoma, there's no specifics, but you use your left hand because in Mother Tantra, there are one of the requirements to do everything with the left hand first. Let's not get into it now. With the left hand. You can do this finger, this finger, this finger, or this finger. Up to you. So it doesn't matter. One mala, one mantra. Keep it at your heart. Train it. So your hands are focused. Control your body. If you get tired, put it down a little bit, bring it up. But shouldn't you under here? No. You reincarnate, you can create karma to be a midget. You can come back as a dwarf. What is that? And then you know you put your mala down. The house freaking keeper, but Martha Stewart is it? <laughs> oh, now I'm comfortable. <laughs> what is that? I don't understand what that is. You're not bad for doing that, but you're not controlling your body and mind. That's the whole point. Two hours, three hours, keep pushing it. It's really hard, I know. I'm not making fun of anyone. It's really hard. But it gets harder if you don't do it. It's really hard. I had to do retreats with my guru, so I didn't breathe. I was like, when I was doing retreats with Ganshi Ramchi, there's about nine of us. We're up in his protector room in Nepal. On the throne, uh, he did. There was one fat monk next to me. He was holding, he was fat. You're not supposed to eat, you're not supposed to drink. He was cheating the whole time. He got on my nerves, he really pissed me off. We're doing Yamataka, a retreat, you know? And I'm like focusing, I'm doing my thing, Rimji gave instructions. And in between, he always comes in in between retreats. So your sessions are supposed to be two hours, it becomes like five, because he gives a talk, which I'm grateful for. Because the talk is more important than the mantra. And so he gives talks, and he explains, and he goes off and comes in. And, and when he's around, that monk next to me, he's older. He's all like focused and doing his mantra and listening. The minute Gantri is gone, he's sleeping. I'm like, I can't talk. I want to write a note. He's like, he's like sitting there like. The whole two hours he's sleeping every day, every session. I'm not kidding. He's always sleeping. And I'm sitting there meditating. I gotta, gotta block out his, his snoozing. He's like, oh. and it gets loud. I dare not say anything because he's older, you know? I, I dare not, and he's sitting there, his name is Gen some, oh, no, 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 I'm not gonna tell you his name. Anyways, he was, he was snoring away, and then when he finally wakes up, he's hungry, he's like, oh, 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 oh. And, I'm, and he literally does that when he wakes up, and then there's all this dry rice, he's eating the rice. I'm like, you're cheating! He's like, because he's hungry, he's quite fat, so he's like. And I can hear him, crack, 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 and I'm like, I'm starving. Like one grain of rice would help me, you know? I mean, when you're hungry, even one grain of rice can walk. And he's eating rice, and he's sleeping, and he's snoring, and nobody reports him, and he's sitting right next to me, and sometimes he, he, he like, and I don't move over. And I'm all goody goody sitting there doing retreats. And I swear to God, we did this for like 10 days, and it really got on my nerves. I was like, I couldn't, you know, and the thing is, once you start retreat, you, you have your seat. You can't change it because you put the swastika and everything under. You can't. You're stuck. So now, next time, put my swastika somewhere else. I didn't know he'd be like that. I thought he'd be like you know, all wonderful and fabulous and senior. 
And when Gachunji walks in, I don't know, he wakes up and he's doing his mantra and he's all goody goody. And I'm like, you are such a hypocrite. I'm like, oh God, you went. And in the end, I realized, look at my mind. Why am I judging him? Maybe he's in deep meditation pretending he's sleeping. Why am I thinking all these negative thoughts? Why am I thinking it's unfair? Why do I want to report him? Why am I so goody goody? Why am I so, what's that better than thou? What's that when you're, you're always like, just the one? So uh, so why am I so self righteous? I, at the end of the retreat, it, I, it dawned on me. I was like, oh. Then I had another fun friend, Billy, he didn't help me out. He said, Did you see him sleeping during the retreat? I was like, Yeah, I did. Did you? He's like, Yeah. He said, It's all unfair. I said, I know. <laughs> He said, you know, there's no meat here. Let's go get meat. I said, let's go. So me and the other monk, we sneak off and get meat. While we're eating, I'm thinking, oh, no, I'm cheating like some little monkey. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and, and at the end of the dream, I actually thought to myself, see how my mind operates, see how judgmental, see how self-righteous. And do I have any attainments? And if I'm going to have attainments, he's the very people I'm supposed to help. And yet, I'm putting him down. So what kind of Yamataka retreat? So my whole Yamataka retreat was cool and neat, but I wasted the mantra by being angry with him. I learned that. I was angry with him the whole time because I was so self-righteous. And you know what? If I just blocked out all the noise and all the sound, I wouldn't hear it. And I would gain attainments. I realized that at the end of the retreat, I'm not trying to be goody-goody here, really. And I realized my conscience said nothing to him. Look how disturbed my mind. And you know what's the funny thing? It didn't disturb anybody else except Millie. Nobody else. Nobody even noticed him. And I saw how my mind, how self-righteous I was. This was at the ball. So when you do your retreats, hold your mall as well. If you need to get a drink, drink quickly, put it down. Don't keep going to pee unless you really can't hold it. Don't stuff yourself with food and drink before retreats. You'll be sleepy and have a pee and stop. It's part of the discipline. Well, if I'm not hydrated, I get sick. Honey, even your hydrated, get sick. Well, fish don't get sick, you're hydrated all day long. <laughs> stupid. <coughs> so stupid. Don't tell me all that crap. I'm not stupid. <laughs> and then do your mantra. One, and focus. And do it well. Pull it towards you. Pull the intake. And then block out the sign or focus on the mantra loud. Sometimes you get tired. Put your hands down. You shouldn't stretch and move around. No, because there are people around you, even if you're alone, single ones there. What's so bad karma about stretching? Nothing. Discipline. Discipline. And if you have to go and pee, you really have to, you just control yourself, you cannot, you got a pee problem, fine. Get up, put your mouth down respectfully. Get up quickly, you go quietly, do not disturb anyone, put your head bowed. You should always walk among retreaters with their head bowed, because they're focusing, you don't know who's gaining attainment. So you walk by always with your head bowed. Go to the bathroom, after you're done with yourself, wash your hand, rinse your mouth, and then come back and walk quietly and sit down and resume. And don't keep moving things, fucking things, straightening things out. It's not Martha Stewart time. Everybody understand? If you fart, you burp, or any of that. There's three, there's two, sometimes you do three mattress, but then I just tell you seven. If you fart, you burp, you poop by accident, not poop, but you fart by accident, you burp by accident, you sneeze by accident, you cough, just do seven mantras. Actually, oh, I don't do seven. Don't be so calculative. Get attainments, not how many mantras you do. Oh, I did. How many do you today? 10,007. <laughs> the seven doesn't count, honey. It's making up for the seven you missed by farting. That's seven mantras. So don't be so calculative. Does everybody understand? Okay. And when you're done with the retreat, when you're done with the retreat, you should be sad, not happy. Oh, now I can go and, and, and fool, go fool around again. You should be rejoicing to retreat, and you gotta go back into samsara again. The purpose of retreat is to become attainment, enlightenment, less attachment, so you can be a benefit to others. The person, purpose of samsara is that you go deeper and suffer more and bring more suffering to others than yourself. This is the purpose of retreat. And think how lucky I am. KFR is provided. Got sponsors, got food, got air con, got lights, got fans. My guru and my dharma brothers and sister work so hard to provide this place for me. 
How lucky I am to be here. Everything's provided. What am I, a diva to show up? I'm some star. How lucky I am. Everything's provided. The facilities. And even my guru gives me teachings directly so I have a successful retreat. Everything is handed to me on a golden platter. May I help KFR? May I raise funds for KFR? May I clean and wash? May I maintain? May I do everything so KFR can do even more of what I'm doing today? How lucky I am to be here. How lucky I am to be in practice. How lucky I am if everything is handed to me on a silver platter. Even the teachings are given to me directly and quietly and comfortably. Should be like that and feel grateful. And how do you express gratefulness? Transformation. How do you expect how do you express transformation? By not burdening your guru and the people around you. By transforming. Never burden your guru. Never burden the people around you. Work towards that. And how do you do that? By developing concentration. By developing concentration, you have the force and the ability to cut off the attachments. Does everybody understand? You can apply what I just shared with all of you to any retreats you do individually as a group and do more and more. Now, when you do these short retreats, two, three days, it's very simple. Real retreats take a long time. By tradition, you have to do signal ma, ah, ka, sa, ma, ra, sa, shan, da, ra, sa, ma, ra, ya, he. How many is that? 14. You have to do 1.4 million for a basic retreat. It's 100,000 per syllable. So Tara is 10. So a basic retreat of single ma is 1.4 million per person, not collectively, to gain attainment. Don't be afraid of the numbers. You can gain it before or after. And why are you fixated on number? You should be happy with the practice. So what you're doing is not even a real retreat. It's very light. So doing retreat, you can't control yourself, drinking, moving, peeing. What are you doing in a real retreat? Vajraganese retreat. A genuine one, a full blown out one, is three years, three months, three days. If you can't be locked up at Manjushri Hill for two days, how are you going to be locked up for three years? So how am I going to be locked up for three years? Because in those three years, you see a massive transformation over your mind. You'll come out a different person. Brilliant and bright. Most lamas gain attainments during retreats. Most during those long retreats, that's where they gain their high attendance. Most lamas. That's why real lamas, real practitioners, always seek a place to do retreat because that's the key to becoming enlightened. Why retreat? Retreat is when you retreat from samsara, retreat from your distractions, retreat from the family or friends and all the mess you created. Family and friends are the mess you created. You can make your parents independent of you. You don't have to have them controlling you, so you can't conduct. You can make your spouses independent. Why did you even get a spouse? You can make your kids independent. Why did you have kids? You created all that. All that. Don't try to blame it on something out of it. You created that. Now, there are special cases when they're very sick or ill or whatever. That's different. But you created all that mess. So don't use the mess to create more mess. So the more relationship you want, remember, that's how much time you put into relationship. And that's it. Good or bad. Now, if you're blessed with a partner that does dharma and goes all the way, that's a little different. It's a little different. But don't use that as an excuse to increase more attachment on it. It's a little different. There are Dharma couples that do tremendous Dharma together. There are, there are, there are always exceptions to any rule. It's not just across the board. And when you're done with the retreat, do a very good dedication. And during the retreat, don't fall asleep. During Dharma talk, never fall asleep. If you're sitting with someone talking, you fall asleep, how does it look? You want face what? You can fall asleep with someone while they're talking. How you can fall asleep with your guru who gives you so much more than just a friend. Never fall asleep. Focus. And when you're done with the retreat, do a supreme dedication, king of prayers, and pray. You may don't don't pray for more retreats or whatever. Pray you may gain attainments. When you pray, you can get more attainments. Then the attainments might come by study, by debate, by retreat, by contemplation, come many ways. Leave it open, which way it will come. Does everybody understand? Yeah. And by doing this retreat, may we create causes to care for 
a place filled with people who are doing genuine retreats, and gaining attainments, controlling their mind, developing great compassion, and being great teachers, and being a tremendous benefit to others. We will create a situation for KFR to make many Dharma teachers. Because an empty temple just doing pujas and prayers and making incense is nice, but it will not sustain. So we will make KFR become a place of 108 special beings who live here, who abide here, who practice, who learn, who do retreat, who teach, who clean, who grow, who paint, who wash, who sweep, and maintain this beautiful little spiritual community. And from this spiritual community, we create teachers, we create um, meditators, practitioners, great nuns, great monks. We create great, great retreatants so that people can gain enlightenment here. So that Kachara Forest Retreat becomes a portal for people to enter Kachara Paradise. All those who can enter KFR as karma. All those who can remain, study, stay, and practice as a very good karma. KFR will become like Gandhi. I dare say ambitiously. It will become powerful. It will become a place to create many teachers, many practitioners, and to work in KFR compared to a secular job, you're wasting your time with a secular job. Secular education, secular job is a waste of time. Because all that does is get you, how, that teaches you how to make more money so you can buy more cars, or more houses, more trips, and more distractions. That's all it is. Sustain KFR, plant, clean, weed, wash, sweep, donate, help, maintain. Most important in KFR, the best way to make growth is practice and transform. That's the best way. If the temple is sparkling, clean, and beautiful, but no one has attainments, it's just a sparkling, beautiful temple. So, and then when we create this energy of retreat, when people come here, they'll be blessed, they'll be healed. They'll feel peaceful, they'll feel happy, even the animals will be blessed. The minute they walk into KFR, they'll, be, they'll feel good by the power of our blessing the place with our retreats. That's what Jeremji and his main disciples did in Tibet, for God did to create it to be some, such a powerful place. It becomes powerful because our mind transforms in that place. Why is what Gaia powerful? Because under that tree, Buddha transformed. He became a, a self-centric, selfish, angersome, hateful person into that of a fully enlightened Buddha. And so that spot marks and is blessed for eternity of that transformation. So this place can be the same. A spot you see, transform into. Become a high level. Practice. Take your vows. Hold your vows well. Some of your pastors are taking your vows over. Hold your vows well. Happily take your vows. Commit to your monk and, and your nun. But don't be afraid. You're not leaving anything worthwhile behind. Keep the place clean. Wash the place. Maintain. Do practice your dream. Most important. Show love and compassion and don't be greedy and grabby. Those of us we know are greedy, greedy and grabby and have an attitude problem, we protect them by not getting too close. Not letting not by being mean or vicious. How do we avoid people who inevitably hurt and damage if they have the common to do that? Just don't get too close. Not avoid them. Not not, not hate them, just avoid for now. That's what they do with um, criminals, they put them in jail, unfortunately until they can control themselves and they can show reform and then they go for parole and they'll let out. That's all it is. So therefore, what's very important now is remember all that, create this energy, create a KFR inside of you and a real KFR here. Many people will come. It will become a powerful institution. Don't be left behind. It will become that. Do you know why it will become that? Because I will work very hard towards it and wherever I am, Dharma will grow. Simple as that. Because every part of my fiber is Dharma. Wherever I go, wherever I abide, the Dharma will grow. Because that's my motivation. It's not because I'm better than you. That is my motivation. Wherever it's ever she is, the Dharma will grow. You observe the much. Even the animals around me would be more calmer and quieter. Because my intention is to benefit. I told you not because I'm better than you, because that's what I focus on. You can do the same, we're the same. 